Shit on my face, there's shit on my face. But if I don't film today, I'll have to wait a week. Woo! So Throne of Glass is a YA fantasy series about Selena, a woman who is imprisoned for a year in a salt mine until she is granted the opportunity for employment and freedom as the king's assassin, just as long as she can survive several deadly trials. So it's a cool setup. Selena is sassy and fluctuates wildly between funny and annoying. And the world that the book is set in is very interesting as well. Like, who would build a castle out of glass, and why? I would... <laughs> I would read that book. Unfortunately, that is not this book. So I don't like it, and I'm gonna tell you why with minimal spoilers. Number one, I don't think Selina understands what an assassin is. <laughs> She's been trained for this since the age of eight, but nobody has told her that an a good assassin will not receive any praise, because a good assassin will never be found out. Number two, I like romance. I especially like YA romance. It's just a shame that the romance in this book is really, really boring. Uh, it doesn't go anywhere. It's not will they, won't they. It's they will, but, you know, once they get round to it... It's, I don't really like that. The love triangle is shit and goes nowhere, and to be honest, I'm more interested in Kaol and Dorian's relationship. Like, because it seems like there's some romantic tension there. Or am I, I think I just shift them. Hmm. Oh no. Oh no. Them getting together might have been really interesting. They spent the whole book, like, fighting over Selena, but what if it turned out that they were fighting over her because they liked each other? That'd be really cool. I'd like that. I'd read seven books about that. Number three. The King is a shit villain and just boring as hell. He's evil for the sake of being evil. He wants power because he likes power and wants to kill lots of civilians so he can continue to get power. It's like, I don't really like it. <laughs> Number four, the tasks to choose a king's champion uh, make for such a good narrative structure. Uh, you know where the plot is going, you're invested in these tasks, so why does the book completely lose interest in them about halfway through? Watching Selina wait around and read books in between cancelled tasks, just waiting for Dorian and Kale to come around, is just boring. If anything, it just kills the pace completely. And number five, the book is way too long. A hundred pages could have easily been cut, just by having less time hanging out doing nothing between cancelled tasks. If the book was going to hate its own structure, it could have had fewer tasks and fewer champions instead of having to deal with too many of both. Yeah, point five is pretty much just point four, but I really wanted to hold my whole hand out for, like, a sense of completion. So, there's that. I have a few other problems, but they're mostly nitpicks, and I don't think listening to them is particularly interesting. What I do think is interesting is debunking other people's nitpicks. <laughs> so if she's such a master of poisons, why does she eat a mysterious bag of candy that appears in her room? Oh, I don't know, dude. Maybe it's because she's just spent a year as a literal slave <laughs> and fancies some fucking chocolate. She also doesn't have much of a reason to distrust food at this point. Like, she's been living in the castle for several months. She hasn't prepared any of her own food. So why would she start now? Uh, being inspired by Cinderella is dumb. Uh, no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think being inspired by anything in fiction is bad, inherently. Uh, she's- Sarah J Maas has said in an interview that she's also inspired by Kill Bill and other cool action movies. And if you think those are dumb, then... You're right, but taking the inspiration from them isn't. Um, why does she sleep so heavily if she's an assassin? Uh, because she just spent a year sleeping on literal rocks. So, yeah, sleeping on an actual bed is gonna be pretty effective in keeping her asleep. Goodreads is largely full of good and funny reviews, which is why I keep putting them in my videos. <laughs> but presenting nitpicks as genuine problems you have with the book just smacks of bad faith to me. And while reviewing books in bad faith might be good for finding the gifts that perfectly sum up your opinions, I think Reviewing in good faith is far more interesting. So a few years ago, my friend Natalie reviewed Throne of Glass for her blog, It's Past My Bedtime But, and I'll leave a link to the, the, it in the description, because it's so good. It's such a good blog. Like, every single post is just bursting with charm, and I think you need to read it. I especially like the story where she embarrasses herself meeting Michael Morpurgo. <laughs> it was just very human. I like that. So Natalie's criticism of the book is way more constructive than my suggestion to just cut a hundred pages. 
She suggests adding more details to Selena's thoughts of killing everyone. So instead of simply thinking, I could kill you every time she meets someone who's vaguely annoying, she could be more specific and tell us the perfect place to stab a person, or the perfect way to strangle them to make them pass out quick enough, or like even just the best way to poison them. If being an assassin is her area of expertise, it would be really cool to tell us something about pressure points and jugulars and so on. As is, the action can be a little bit vague at times and doesn't show us the amount of research that Mars has put into malnutrition and so on. Natalie also managed to make it through book two, which I didn't. I had to switch to the audiobook so I wouldn't have to stop reading every time I wanted to roll my eyes. And I gave up on book two as soon as I realised it was just going to be more of the same. Why don't I like this series? It's popular as fuck, bro. Why did the pacing kill the book for me so much? I just finished Robin Hobb's Farsia trilogy and the pacing in that is the slowest I've ever read in any series. What's the difference? I mean, apart from the fool generally, the fact that the magic system is so well thought out and plays a part in societal attitudes and isn't just a tool for nonsense. We see our protagonist grow and actually uses assassin's training, and its pacing produces a palpable sense of dread, like especially book two. Throne of Glass relies on its quick pacing to keep you reading. The Farsia trilogy revels in its slow pace, and more importantly, it's still interesting. Like one question asked is, will the Fitz be able to live his own life when his destiny is to serve the throne? And it actually explores that question in different ways throughout three books. The question initially asked in Throne of Glass is, will she be able to overcome her trauma? And the answer is, yes, uh, definitely, she will. It's not really going to be much of a problem at all, just give her some chocolate. So yeah, I don't like Throne of Glass, so like, why do I care so much? And I think the reason is because it's just heartbreaking when you don't like something that someone very close to you loves a lot. And this isn't the first thing it's happened to me with. Supernatural, after all, it's Leviathan stuff, Once Upon a Time, The Worst Witch, even though it's a superior alternative to Harry Potter, Michael Grant's Gone series, uh, Stephen Moffat's entire run on Doctor Who, Monogatari, just all of it. Just couldn't, couldn't get into it. Couldn't get into it. And, you know, like, all the football and sport. Just all? All sport? <laughs> There's no sport I can get behind. I want to like these things. I want to be the kind of person who can talk to you and bond with you about the things that you love. I want to know what it is to be completely absorbed by the things that you like, the things that you love. And like, I want to be able to talk about football with a guy without making the really easy IT crowd reference. Like, you know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to do it now, it's lazy. <laughs> One time I was in the pub after a long day at work, and I was waiting for a friend to come and meet me. <laughs> and as I was doing that, uh, I was sitting alone trying to read a book while the match was on the TV. And a guy came over to me and tried to engage me once or twice in uh, saying, oh, the football, the football. And I, I, was, I had to say as politely as I could, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about football with you. <laughs> and I said this about two or three times until he left me alone, uh, which, you know, big cringe. But the real cringe happened later as I was leaving, and he found me in the toilets, and he, and he said to me, can I ask you something? What's your problem, mate? And that question stayed in my head the whole journey home. Because, you know, what is wrong with me, mate? Why can't I like football? Why don't I like Throne of Glass? Anyway, if you like my fantasy, uh, Songs of Autumn by Lauren Sevilla is out now, and so I'll put a link in the description, because she's very nice, and I think she deserves some support. Uh, I'll also leave a link to a fanfic I wrote about Songs of Autumn, and uh, you can read that too if you want. I don't know if I'm going to write any more than chapter one, but it's, it's a lot of fun for me, and that's all that matters. Number four. Oh, just turn your hand around, just turn your hand around. Four. Number four. 